15th at 6.30. Um, with me, I'm the chair, Linda Vacan. I have the vice chair by phone, Councilor Greeny, and Councilor Todd McKee, Council President. Also joining us on the Zoom meeting is Councilor Terry Murphy and Councilor Joe McGivern. McGivern. So um, to get on with the business, um, our most pressing business is the current situation with our mayor having accepted a different position and us needing to keep the workings of the city proceeding as smoothly as we can. So I'd like to entertain a motion to take to suspend our rules and take up items one through four off the table. Motion, suspend motion to take up items one through four. four. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. So item one was filed by Councilor Sullivan that the city of Holyoke through its honorable city council and honorable mayor hereby petition the Massachusetts general court to enact legislation to amend the requirements for special election upon mayoral vacancy in the year 2021 in the city of Holyoke and that said legislation be entitled an act relative to the office of mayor in the city of Holyoke and that said act read as follows Section one, notwithstanding any general or special law to the contrary, if a vacancy in the office of mayor of Holyoke occurs at any time in the year 2021, the vacancy shall not be filled by a special municipal election and shall instead be filled according to the provision of section 28 of chapter 189 of the acts of 1992, which states that Whenever there shall be a vacancy in the office of mayor, the president of the city council shall act as mayor and possess all the rights and powers of mayor during such vacancy, except that when so acting as mayor, he shall not have the power of appointment or removal unless thereto in any instance authorized by vote of the city council. And section two, this act shall take effect upon passage. Um, agenda item two filed by Councillor Sullivan was a resolution for a home rule petition that was attached. It was provided to all of the city councilors at the city council meeting and um, has, I don't believe it's been read into the public record at all at this point. So I think to be proper, we should do that for the benefit of any of the public that are watching. So bear with me through the whereas, as if you will. So the city of Holyoke in the year 2021 home rule petition. Whereas on February 25th, 2021, Mayor Alex B. Morris was appointed and subsequently approved by the select board of the town of Provincetown to serve as town manager, thereby having an anticipated resignation date from the position as mayor of the city of Holyoke before the end of his term. And just as an editorial, I know we publicly are aware and we have received a communication that will be officially received, but not until tomorrow night, updating that whereas. Um, but continuing, whereas the City of Holyoke Charter states that in the event there is a vacancy in the office of mayor more than six months previous to the expiration of the municipal year, the City Council shall forthwith call meetings for a new election. And whereas, as currently written, if the mayor resigns on or before June 30th, 2021, the City of Holyoke charter would require a special election process to be held in addition to the already regularly scheduled municipal elections in September and November. And whereas organizing and executing multiple municipal elections in a single year would place the large financial burden on the city of Holyoke on top of the financial constraints of the ongoing public health emergency of COVID-19. And whereas requiring the city of Holyoke residents to repeatedly leave their homes in order to vote in multiple elections in the same year during the pandemic puts their lives as well as the lives of city staff at risk. And whereas holding multiple elections within the short time period of one year 
will create barriers to accessibility, lower voter turnout, potential voter confusion, and place disproportionate burdens on traditionally disenfranchised communities such as immigrants, low income, disabled, Black and Latinx communities such as ours. Now therefore be it ordered that a petition to the general court accompanied by a bill for a special law relating to the city of Holyoke be filed with an attested copy of this order be and hereby is approved under clause one of section eight of article two as amended of the articles of amendment to the constitution of the commonwealth of Massachusetts to the end that legislation be adopted precisely as follows except for clerical or editorial changes of form only. So the petition as it was initially submitted to the council, council reads, petition for a special law regarding an act relative to the office of mayor in the city of Holyoke. And that said act reads as follows. Section one, notwithstanding any general or special law to the contrary, if a vacancy in the office of mayor of Holyoke occurs at any time in the year 2021, the vacancy shall not be filled by special municipal election and shall instead be filled according to the provisions of section 28 of chapter 189 of the acts of 1992, which states that whenever there shall be a vacancy in the office of mayor, the president of the city council shall act as mayor and possess all of the rights and powers of mayor during such vacancy, except that when so acting as mayor, he shall not have the power of appointment or removal unless thereto in any instance authorized by the vote of the city council. And section two, that this act shall take effect upon its passage. So that was attached to agenda item two. Actually, Yes, so that completes that agenda item. On agenda item three filed by me, according to section six of the city charter, the city council calls for a special election upon the vacancy of Mayor Morris from his position of mayor. Uh, referring to the language taken from the charter that calls for the president to assume those duties, which I've already read, um, that language into the record, so I don't feel the need to repeat it. Agenda item four, filed by Councilor McGivern, the city of Holyoke through the Honorable City Council and Honorable Mayor hereby petition the Massachusetts General Court to enact legislation to amend the requirement for the special election upon mayoral vacancy in the year 2021 in the city of Holyoke and that said legislation be entitled an act relative to the office of mayor in the city of Holyoke. And um, under that language and that said act read as follows is the exact language that I've already read into the record from the previous order. So I don't think it's necessary to repeat it. Um, and also section two, that the act shall take effect upon its passage is included. So we now have all of these orders before us and in city council, there were some issues raised relative to the orders and relative to the question of whether there were perhaps any other state laws that had been enacted since the last time this occurred in our city, which was a long time ago. And so in an effort to be uh, vigilant and thorough, the city council referred it to this committee. Uh, subsequent to that, I have coordinated with our city attorney, Crystal Barnes, um, who from the feedback I've received from her, and she can clarify because I know she's on the Zoom, if I misinterpreted anything, she is seeing this as a situation where we are looking to have our charter dominate because we are seeking to establish a law for one year only in this instance in this petition. Um, so with that, I will open up the meeting. Oh, I would also like to note that all of you on the Zoom that are on the city council should have received an updated draft from attorney Barnes relative to the resolution. That updated draft that you received should also have an additional section which stipulates 
specifically that after the election in November, that the elected mayor will be seated and sworn in and take on all the duties of the office immediately after the election is certified. So that is additional language that is before us from our city attorney in response to discussion at the city council meeting, which of course, any and all can be amended if there is interest by us in committee or at the city council as a whole. So now that we have everything in the record um, and Crystal Barnes, Attorney Barnes, if um, she's indicating that anything is missing, um, we'll suspend rules to make sure that the record is complete. But at the moment, I'd like to open up the discussion to members of the committee and counselors present. I have a question, Madam Chair. Yes, Councilor uh, it, it, Yeah, Thank you. Um, with regards to the resolution, I know there's two different ones. If the acting mayor takes the seat, do they have to give up their city council seat? I know there are two different versions. One was a Lawrence review and one was a Boston review in the sense of having to step down or was that oh, finalized yeah. or? Yes, hang on a minute because I do yeah. have that language in front of me also. Let me just find that. Hang on, I have it on my phone. Okay, you are correct. Um, in terms of, oh, hang on. In terms of that question that was raised, let me read the exact words into the record from that. Oh, hang on, I'm somehow looking at an old version. I know Crystal sent me an updated version on Friday. Um, can we suspend the rules and let Crystal read um, section three into the record, please? Motion to suspend Motion the rules to allow the legal to speak. Yes, for some Second. reason. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 So um, I the new, the new version that I sent to all of you does have a sentence because I'm just, I created a draft for what I believe your notes were from the last meeting. Um, and so I did put in that the acting mayor shall be entitled to simultaneously continue his city council duties. Um, and assuming that it was going to be uh, Councillor McGee as ward seven counselor and city council president until such time a new mayor is elected. Um, I also have Lawrence's um, act pulled up and it does say um, what they ended up doing was shifting their president into the seat and then the vice president assumed um, duties of the president and then at the time that their new mayor was elected they then shifted everybody back so the vice president went back to vice president the president went back to their seat so um, in their instance they did not they didn't have the president also sit as mayor they shifted everybody up um, and then back down. Oh, okay. So thank you. I have I have found that sentence in the draft. I was thinking it, initially it was a section three, but you just amended section one. Okay, so we still have two sections within the revised draft from attorney Barnes um, with section two still stipulating that the act shall take effect upon its passage. Um, I had looked for the other resolutions and thank you, Attorney Barnes, for providing that. I could not locate that language from Lawrence. Um, and I, I think that's an interesting concept that they've included there because of just all the potential conflicts of interest that can arise when the mayor's presenting a budget and then city council votes on the budget. So I can see how there could be some challenges in front of us in that regard. Um, Councilor McGee, are you all set? No, I, I still have. Um, so with that, and I want clarification for whoever the acting mayor will be. The reason I bring that up is because I was non-committal in the sense of giving all details as to my position simply because 
I was still doing a, a little research uh, on my side. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I wanted it to go to committee so we could vet this in order to give me time as well as I thought I did have more time in the sense of when the mayor's official departure was going to be. Uh -huh. We now know that it's going to be a lot sooner than what was anticipated and there's nothing wrong with that. That's, that's his position. Mm -hmm. uh, with that, although there's no uh, readily apparent conflict of interest for me uh, stepping in as the acting mayor, there could be a potential risk of a uh, conflict of interest down the road. Uh, also, it is my belief that this shouldn't be a part-time job, that a mayor who steps in should be there every day working full-time due to the issues that we are seeing. For me, because of that and the potential risk that could be there, I'm not saying to you find, find a way to vote for another member to act as the acting mayor because of the issues that I just raised. So with that, I will be asking uh, for tomorrow night. And that's why I wanted this meeting uh, before anything happened where there was a transition. Then if I had to step away, that's not fair to the city in my view. So that's why I'm gonna ask if we can, you know, whatever we come up for language, I'd ask that my name be removed from it simply because uh, of the potential conflict down the road that uh, once again that I was doing my due diligence on. So if we just say person who has been appointed by the council as acting mayor, whatever you guys want uh, uh, as as the, the full body, I just want to be full disclosure, transparent and upfront with everyone on this on this Zoom meeting. Okay, so just to be clear, I'm understanding that because we're outside of the purview of the charter at this point anyway. So I'm understanding that you would be declining to extend that language of the charter to this period of and point in time starting March. Correct, I, I, I okay. did reach out to legal. I did speak with Crystal today um, mm -hmm. as to what language could be put in to this order because it's, it's a special request to the state legislature it's a one-time deal, kind of like Lawrence and Boston, everyone's doing a little different. Here, having done my due diligence, I am, uh, I was told by Crystal that, that it's something that we could put in if that's, that's the wish of the body. So that's why I wanna update everyone as I got the information and it developed. Okay, um, so I would also like to recognize that Councillor Sullivan has joined us, Councillor Bartley, Councillor Tallman, and Councillor Lisi. And ladies. Councillor uh, Lacey. I'm here oh, as well. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I have limited screen view, Councillor Leahy. So I couldn't see you on my screen. Welcome. Okay. So is there any other member of the committee or the city council that wishes to be heard? Councillor McGivern. Thank you, Councillor Bacon. And uh, just first, I just like to suggest the uh, four items be merged as one. I think it's the, the goal is between tonight and tomorrow night to come out with one consensus as to how we wish to see government in Holyoke uh, take place over the next uh, seven, seven to eight months. Um, each of the orders are similar, even Councillor Vacants is essentially what we're doing is moving what we're required to do is have a special election, but we're moving it beyond the six months to November at the same time as the regularly scheduled election for the purpose of saving anywhere from 80 to $100,000. I think the goal um, tomorrow night is we need to come up with a consensus so that we have the golden opportunity to, to do this of how we wanna see our government look for the eight months after Mayor Morse resigns. Uh, we have a golden opportunity because the state legislature and governor has already or is in the works of allowing Boston and Lawrence to do just that. So I think we can work within what we believe as, as a body, you know, would work for the city of Hoyoke. Um, I, I think the, um, the charter speaks for itself, but right now I think we have the opportunity to amend that for one year and I think it's, uh, incumbent upon us to do do just that. But if we could just merge, if you would consider merging the four items, I think that would get us away from uh, more than multiple votes, but get us into position to take one vote. Um, since the question is directed to me, um, 
my response to that is that these are, while two of the items are the same, one is distinctly different. And so they should not be merged. Uh, they need to be dealt with separately where they're not similar. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to speak on this matter? I'm not seeing Yes, Madam any. Chair. Councilor Green. That, that, yeah, uh, item three is significantly different from the other items. Um, can we can we operate and take item three out of you know out of the package? Sure, I would um, I would entertain a motion relative to item three. Um, so that motion that, to go to item three separately. Well, yeah, is that what we you want? have all the items before us, so we can take them up as we wish. Yes, so we are looking at item three, which we already have taken up. Um, and I would entertain, um, at this point, I don't think we need to take any action on it until we have determined what steps we want to take on items one and four and two. So I would like to leave it on the table and discuss the other items first, and then we can dispose of what we would be doing relative to a special election. All right, I'll move to move move to put item three on the table. It's it it's on the table. Yeah, it's right? already it's already up there. So, so so we'll leave it there for now. Thank you. Okay. On items one, two, and four. What are there any um thoughts, ideas? Well, I think, uh, my, Madam Chair, if I could. You have the floor, Councilor Greeny. Yeah, I think we should move to uh, petition the state for the special election. Uh, if that's, that's that, um, two of those orders are to do just that. So I think that uh, uh, we, do, we, we do need to uh, eliminate the special election and, 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 and uh, see if we can get an char extension of our charter to, uh, to, fill that, to fill that seat for the two months it will take. Right. You know, and how we go about doing that, you know, is uh, the procedural issues. Uh, probably we could, I could seek help from a more senior counselor than me in age and, and in, in, in beauty in Councilor McGivern. <laughs> so, Councilor Green. What was that about age? <laughs> it was the beauty just, part that got me, Joe. <laughs> just to clarify, we have before us. Um, the ones that talk about our council president, which is now changed because he is declining. So that part of any other language that you're proposing at this time, or you're deferring to others on the committee? Don't. I would defer to others on the committee that, uh, okay. you know, I would assume that we're going to fill it with another member of the council at some point in time if we're granted the uh the extension if we're granted from the state that we don't need the special election okay. and that would you know that's that's where we would go i would think okay thank if you it, if, I, if i may madam chair the Councilor i think Ma there was a little confusion in the sense of the resol the orders by councillor sullivan and the resolution and councillor mcgivern are to have no special election just to go to a November election, correct? Correct. That, that right. I believe, is what Councillor Greeny intended to say. Okay, I just want to make that's sure because the public, public's watching. Yeah. So for that, those, we're looking that, to go straight to November that's with what one I said. election. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He okay. initially, yeah, that's what I said, yeah. He okay. initially skipped the descriptor, but he clarified it. Okay. Yes, so he is speaking in favor of petitioning the general court so that we don't have a special election. Okay. So now we're actually in discussion relative to what the language would be since the proposed language in both instances, well, in all instances, <laughs> is no longer um, able to be put forth in the structure that it's in because you are declining this um, role. So it's not given anybody, well, at least some of us in the room, any time to think about it up until this moment. But um, 
I'm wondering if there is someone in the room who would have some proposed language that they would like to see substituted. Oh, Madam Chair. Councilor Murphy. Yeah, just in the in the part where it was we were putting it in, the acting mayor shall be entitled to simultaneously continue his city council duties as Ward Seven Councilor and City Council President until such time uh, as the new mayor is elected. I would just suggest that we keep the entire language except that we would uh, eliminate Ward 7 Councilor and City Council President. Since so, if we're allowed to do it, it would be another Councilor and then that would just say that they're allowed to continue their Council duties. Well, except that the language referred to in the resolution refers to the charter, which only refers to the president. So I understand what you're trying to accomplish by just eliminating that qualifying sentence, but that does not accomplish what I believe you are proposing. In order to accomplish that, we would have to have entirely new language that would depart from the charter and rather set up a situation where the city council would be electing an acting mayor. <clears throat> we have no language before us to accomplish that at this time. But that is my understanding of what you are putting forth to accomplish, if I'm understanding you correctly. Yep. Yep. Okay. So I'm not seeing any hands from members of the committee or members of the council. Councilor Leahy, are you looking to speak at all and I'm not seeing it? I'll take that as a no. Okay, so I guess for me, what I need is language from our city attorney so that we have something to look at and consider and debate. Um, we need to, this is a complete um, segue from what had been pretty much a consensus at the city council meeting. And so I think it requires us to have time to think about the options, how we would go about it, um, under what circumstances we would conduct the vote. Um, we have a very interesting situation here when we have two counselors seeking the mayoral seat. So I'm, we are just so filled with conflicts of interest here. It's just a case study for a law student, I would think. So um, for myself, I'd like to entertain a motion to table this, get some legal language from our city attorney. And I'm willing to reconvene a meeting rapidly given the timeline that is short but I'm not personally willing to act on anything with a three minute notice of a draft change of this sort. Councilor McGivern. Thank you. I, and I appreciate that, Councilor Bacon. The, the surprise, the only surprise tonight is Councilor McGee was unable to uh, fulfill the role as acting mayor. The rest of the language can be amended within the petition and the rest of the language is what we put it into committee to talk about and to come up with the final language. The item number two is a combination of a lot of us talking to the city solicitor over a period of time to come to a consensus on. That's not having a special election to save money. I said it earlier, we, we we're not avoiding a special election. We're just moving it to November in order to, re in order to fill the vacancy of mayor, which the charter requires us to do in six months. The charter also says we can only have an acting mayor for six months. That's why we need a home rule petition to move it to November. It's still, in my words, I know it's semantics, it's just moving what we have to do for over six months into November. It makes more sense. I suggested that after November, because in 1992, there was, it's, a, it's a long, it's a short period after a special election for the winner of a special election to take over. You just have to get through the appeals period and then the, the new person who wins takes over the seat. In November, the person who wins doesn't take over until January, January, as we know. 
And that's why I suggested we immediately, upon the re the, uh, the uh, recount um, period goes by, allow the, the winner to take over. So I, I, I think that's important. The the language, you know, that that's that we need to address immediately. Though, those two we have we have some time is the president of the city council because on March 26 Mayor Morse has put his resignation in on March 26 the acting the mayor becomes the acting mayor period and we and I think the time is of essence if our president cannot do that that we find someone who can do it and we need to write the language that the state will allow us to do just that now, as I said earlier, the state is open the door for anyone to, to write language for a one-year period to allow this to happen because they're doing it in Boston, they're doing it in Lawrence, and we in Hoyoke have the opportunity to come to a consensus and, and make a government that will last for the next seven to eight months to fill the vacancy. But if we don't do something on March 26, President McGee becomes the acting mayor by, by by virtue of the language in the charter right now. So I, I, I would hope that we could try to, at least try to hammer something out this evening so we can take a vote tomorrow night. Madam Chair. Councilor Greeny. Yeah, uh, I agree with uh, Councilor McGivern. Uh, the, the, I think that the, the easiest way to go about this would be simply to make the acting mayor in the in the language, and once again, if Crystal is listening, uh, just by appointment of the city council. There's a different thought. I, I don't see why we need all the other language. It's in just but the, by the city council shall have the power to appoint the acting mayor to fill in the term. It simplifies Correct. it, takes away a lot of the red tape, et cetera, et cetera. So I just want to make sure that I'm hearing your suggestion, that you're suggesting that in place of, um, so that after where it says the vacancy shall not be filled by a special municipal election, and shall instead be filled by the city council who appoints an acting mayor? Exactly. Okay. It simplifies the language. It, uh, it's pretty generic. And uh, I think it's crystal clear as to basically what we want. Okay. I'll second Thank that. Councilor okay. Bacon, the uh, city solicitor has something in the chat room for you. Thank you. And um, hang on a second because Councilor Greeny has made that as a motion. Councilor McGee has seconded it. So I want to make sure under discussion that I see um, Councilor Lisi was in the queue. And hang on and let me see if I can see what's in the chat. Oh, so in the chat is that our city attorney has a red line rough draft if you want to screen share it. So is the red line rough draft attorney Barnes relative to Councilor Greeny's motion? Yes, yes. So I've oh. made it so that um, the councilor, the council president is not in there and there's some appointment language by city council but it's all red lines, so you can see what I'm changing. Okay, um, if you could screen share that, yes, that would be great, thank you. Um, while Crystal is getting that ready, um, Councilor Lisi, did you wish to speak? Uh, yeah, thank you. I, I just think that we should also be clear in terms of the um, appointing powers, like um, what pool we would draw from exactly if it would be a council member or someone from the general public. I mean, I think that needs to be specified or at least clarified in some way. Okay, 
So can everybody see the red line version okay? Crystal, could you just go through it so that people who maybe can't see it could know what's in it, particularly Councilor Greeny? Sure, so I've deleted most of section one. So right now it's it states, notwithstanding any general or special law to the contrary, if a vacancy in the office of mayor of Holyoke occurs at any time of the city council of a fellow city council member, a majority vote of the body shall be required for confirmation. And then the acting mayor as appointed by the city council shall be entitled to simultaneously continue his or her city council duties. Uh, oh, I deleted too much. Um, as it, This will say as counselor until such time a new mayor is elected and then leaving in the last part that the mayoral candidate elected in the regular scheduled 2021 municipal election will be immediately seated uh, once the votes are certified. So, okay. yeah, that, I don't know that, if there's that clarifies more. I don't know if we want to that, expand that, on the process. I think we need this to be very precise as to how it's going to work um, because we are asking the state to do something very interesting here because our charter is relatively clear and now we're we're diverting so far away from the charter but um, in speaking with the elections division she basically stated that whatever we want to ask for just ask for all in one foul swoop that's basically how Lawrence and Boston did it they were very specific about any procedure they wanted to do so Madam Chair if I may are you all set Council Lisi Council Graney yeah, that 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 clarifies what I wanted. I I intended, I intended it to be a, a city councilor that would uh, fulfill that seat. That's basically what I said. Okay. The, the only thing that I wavered away from was the president of the city council, just to make it generic and make it a a a a, a, a city councilor, not open it up to the general public. That's not what my intention was at all. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. All right, is everybody all set with what this contains at this point? I, um, the comment that I would make is that whoever is appointed to the acting mayor is going to be potentially in the position of having conflicts of interest between the mayoral role particularly relative to the budget where the mayor presents the budget and the city council role where the only ability is to cut the budget. So I guess in that situation, um, and Attorney Barnes, if you wanna jump in on this, you can, uh, would we need to go issue by issue and the person would simply have to abstain in the face of a conflict? If I we if we include that they stay in their council role? Um, I I think uh, Councilor McGivern, McGivern might be able to speak to some of this since this was a situation that happened prior to, I think, 1992. We've sort of had a discussion a little bit about what precedent looked like. Um, I think personally, it's difficult to have somebody sit in a council seat as well as acting mayor. But if you want it to happen, I think we need to be clear about how that's going to happen. So if if we oh. feel that they should have to abstain from things that would be financially uh, beneficial to them in making votes, um, that's something to put in there. But it could get very overwhelming to think of all the potential scenarios. And I think that would be on that person to make sure that they're following conflict of interest laws and maybe getting opinions on that as they go along. Mm -hmm. Well. Um, speaking for myself, I'm very warm to the language of this city that appointed a, that kept the mayor's role separate from the council role. That to me seems a lot cleaner for the temporary period of time. <laughs> but um, did I miss somebody's hand that was up? Peter, Peter Tallman. Councilor Tallman. And, and yeah. Councilor Lucy. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I'm very comfortable with the way the, the language is written now. I, I think the main thing is uh, that we have to discuss tonight is, is getting this 
together so we feel comfortable with um, not having the election in June and also so in November that as Councilor McGivern stated after the uh, the election is certified in November that um, the the mayor that is elected uh, would start right away um, and I'm, I'm also feel good about the person that as you said whoever is the acting mayor should be separate from the council that wouldn't have the role of of sitting on a council and being acting mayor also I feel that that definitely would be a conflict especially when it when it comes to the budget and other things having to do with uh, you know city ordinances and and um, you know financial issues so um, I, I, I think it, it I feel comfortable about a, a council appointing a, a city councilor um, but I think that person that would be appointed acting mayor should be a person that is separate gives up his position his or her position on the city council thank you thank you um is that councilor greeny yes is there is there language in the charter that addresses that issue so, i mean because in the charter it says that these the president of the city council is going to be the acting mayor is there is there any language in the charter that says that he can't sit on the council too or can he sit on the council i, I thought that the charter explain or uh, was explicit in that he could also maintain his role on the city council um under suspension of rules i'd like um attorney barnes to answer that if she would i don't believe that's explicit in our charter it just says that he will accept the role um i had pointed out that there's Another part of our charter, which states that you can't hold two elected positions at the same time. Um, and it was sort of expressed to me that it, it, the person taking on the role of acting mayor is not being elected into that role, but instead forced into that role. Um, so that wouldn't be a conflict. Okay, thank you. Um, so I'm gonna weigh in on the conflict of interest aspect now. Um, I. Um, take Councillor Tallman's points very much to heart and I agree with him and I think we also have um, an interesting and unique um, conflict of interest situation on the City Council at this time because we have two members of the Council who are declared candidates for mayor and I believe that to eliminate any appearance of a con further and more um, problematic conflict of interest that neither of those candidates should be in consideration for the acting mayor position. Can we take down the screen share, please? Thank you. Madam Chair. Councilor Greeny. Yeah, that also, that makes sense too. That makes sense to me. But uh, once again, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, our, our choices are limited at this point, you know. But yeah. I think you're right. I think you're right. Okay, so the motion that we have before us, just so we're all on the same page, that has been made is that after the language that talks about the vacancy not be filled by a special municipal election and shall instead be filled by appointment of the city council. Is the amendment that is currently on the floor in committee. Is there anybody who wishes to speak on that amendment? Well, I think, yes, uh, Madam Chair. I, I think that the amendment was, was also included to make the appointment from a sitting member of the city council, but okay, I don't know if that's a good idea or not. Okay, filled by the city council by a member of the city council. Okay, so we have that amendment offered to us 
that is saying that the city council would appoint the acting mayor who from the city council. So now we have, and this is not in the form of a motion, it's in the form of a suggested recommendation from a fellow counselor that we would eliminate the language that the acting mayor would continue to sit as a counselor voting as a city counselor. Um, we don't have that as an amendment before, so under further discussion, Councillor McGiver. Thank you. I, I understand the conflict of interest concern, and, and it is something that we're going to have to deal with regardless of how we handle this. Uh, I speak from what happened in 1992. We did have to file a budget at the same time, and we did have to get the, get the majority of the city council to agree to a budget, and that's exactly what will happen regardless of what we do tomorrow night this evening. Um, the, the problem with, with the conflict of, of not allowing the acting mayor to remain fill a seat and be their voice. So if we ask someone to fill the role of the acting mayor due to no fault of anybody on the city council except that a vacancy has occurred during the term of the mayor, we are also now asking them to step down from the city council. We are actually asking the people who they represent to go without their voice for seven or eight months. And I don't think that's right. I, I think the voters have put each of us in here for their reasons, whether it's a ward counselor or whether it's a large counselor. And I think we need to be able to be a voice on the city council for the remainder of the year. The, the conflicts, I mean, already the language is there that if the mayor has to fill, I'm sorry, if the acting mayor has to fill a vacancy, the city council, no matter what, confirms that, that filling. So the mayor cannot act on, the acting mayor cannot act on their own in terms of vacancies in, in any city department. So yes, the mayor's signature is gonna be on the budget. It's gonna be the request of the department heads. And if whoever the acting mayor is, you know, should have, well, he's gonna have a leg up on the city council. But at the same time, I don't think we should take their voice away as a city councilor because people voted them into the city council, not into the acting mayor position. It's unfortunate it works this way, but that's my opinion that we, we have to deal with the conflict, but at the same time, keep the voice of the voters in their seats. Right, thank Madam you. I, that's why we're having the discussion. We don't even have a motion yet. <laughs> thank you. Madam Chair. Councilor Greeny. I agree completely with Councilor McGivern. The, the, uh, the voters of Hoyoke have put people in this position to represent them. And I think that that, that, sh that should stand. And if there a conflict of interest does occur in the future, then it would be up on the onus of the acting mayor to recuse himself or herself from that situation. Okay, so um, Attorney Barnes, that is how you amended the language in your most recent draft, correct? Yes, it was. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Murphy. Yeah, if I can, I, I don't want to, I know Councillor Tallman and Councillor Lisi had their hands up before I did, so I, I will defer to them. I just want to give you a little historical perspective about Councillor well, McGivern. You, well, you haven't had an opportunity to speak yet, so. Yeah, all right, so uh, let me just, I, I agree with Councillor McGivern. Let me just say, though, I got to get Councillor McGivern's history book because it was 1991, Joe. I want you to get the right year down. Uh, and I, I was called and I will, it was a fiscal budget, 1992. <laughs> yeah, but it was 1991. <laughs> I know, uh, and I want to tell you. And he, I was, I served on the council at that point. I ran against, I ran against Councilor McGivern in, in the mayoral primary that year. We had no problem. At least I don't think we had a problem. I, I, I think he, he went in. He served as the acting mayor. He presented his budget. He, he was part of the process. He was part of the review. Obviously, he, more than likely. I'm not sure he voted for any cuts, and I know I proposed a lot of them. <laughs> and I didn't win a lot of them, so I'm, I'm assuming he didn't. But uh, I, I agree also what he said that, uh, you know, he was still in a position to serve as a counselor at large for those constituents. Now, obviously, as mayor, at the mayor, you're serving everybody anyway. But I do think uh, keeping that counselor as part of the council also makes sense in terms of providing the service that they might need. 
and, and again, I, I I served with Councilman McGibbon 30 years ago uh, when I was much, much younger. And uh, I, I honestly do not think in that experience that there was any uh, significant issue in terms of conflict of interest. I think, you know, it was the honor of Councilman McGivern as acting mayor and the city council uh, worked with him in that capacity and in his capacity as council president. So I would encourage the council to allow whoever it is to continue to serve uh, on the council. And obviously, uh, you know, they're gonna be part of the budget proposal and they're gonna have some, some uh, influence in terms of what it is, but it's still just one vote. So, and I think they should have their vote, but I appreciate it. And, and I, I'm sorry if I interrupted there with Councilor uh, Tallman and Councilor DC. Oh, not at all. Um, so Jeffrey, oh, never mind. I remember how I can check the order. I had, I've not been real accustomed to having to worry about the order of hands raised. So looking at my screen, I think it was Councillor Lisi who's next and then Councillor Tom. Councillor Lisi. Thank you. Um, so um, right now. The acting mayor um, and the Councilor that's selected as acting mayor is going to be able to retain their um, council title and duties. That's my understanding of where we are at the moment. Okay. Um, and was there the carve out to um, exempt the two councilors that have submitted papers for the mayoralty? There has been no motion made to that effect at this time in the discussion. Okay, I, I remember it coming up. I was just wondering what the status was there. Um, I would be in favor of the exemption personally. Um, I really feel like I want to, as you know, one of the, these two counselors, I want to be able to run for, for mayor and not take on the duties um, before I actually have the seat. And I think that there's a fairness there to um, the community and also to the counselors. Um, I think that if we are choosing from within, uh, we, we need to sort of set some boundaries there as opposed to if we were pulling from like a professional pool. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Councilor Tom. I'm all set. I'm all set. Thank you, oh. Councilor Bacon. Okay, thank you. Um, is there anybody else with their hand up on any matter? I'm. I could real quick. Councilor McGivern. To Councilor Murphy, I always say 1992 because of that fiscal <laughs> year 1992 yeah. budget. But I'll remind you, there were no cuts proposed because when it got to the city council, there was a $5 million deficit back then that saw a third of every department cut in half, the council on aging closing, and it was, it was a disaster. And the voters of this city saved the city by putting some more money in out of their out of their wallets into the uh, the budget itself. Um, I, I just wanted to say, you know, one one thing, um, one thing real clear. Um, you know, back I, I understand. I think Terry said it perfect because we we had to do a lot of a lot of work and a lot of juggling, but we did so as a team and we came to a consensus. Um, it's a little bit different this time because we have to do it tomorrow and because it's going to happen uh, in November and not the special election because after the special election. We went to the uh, went to the, five months later into the, the regular election and had another mayoral race just like that. But with with that in mind, the only two things I wanted to say was one is if I was a candidate for mayor, I wouldn't want to be the acting mayor because I lost a special election. Two is I am not a candidate for the acting mayor. I have a job that I have to finish out, and I'm not in a position to leave the uh, the career position that I have. I just want to be upfront as far as tomorrow night, what we have to do as a body, but thank you. Thank you. Um, Attorney Barnes, is your hand up because you wanted to address us on a point? Yes, so- um, Oh, I'm I know sorry, I did see it, but I, I didn't know if it was new. Thank you. That's okay. Um, there's two options floating right now. I just want to bring the attention that if we 
don't allow them to continue to sit in their council position, you would then also need to appoint someone to fill that council position to get to the end of the fiscal year or to the end of the municipal year as well. Okay, thank you. And I would note that I don't have a motion on that right now. <laughs> thank you for clarifying that or reminding us that it would then create another temporary vacancy. Okay. Well, Madam Chair, Madam Chair, I can make a motion that do we allow the the city council who is appointed to sit as acting mayor remain in their position as a city councilor. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And that is what the draft language currently states, correct, Attorney Barnes? Yes. Okay, thank you. So we are accepting that amendment to the resolution. And we've approved that there will be an appointment of the city council. So the remaining question is relative to whether the candidates could be chosen or not. Well, I guess if a candidate is chosen, they can decline or not. I mean, we have one that well, doesn't want, has indicated they don't want it. We have another one who has been silent and we have a past one who has declined it. It's not apparently a very popular job. Um, so, <laughs> so at the moment, I'm, it's almost looking like um, we're gonna have to be trying to beg somebody to take it. So um, on that matter, um, I guess, well, Madam Chair, I can make another motion if we if we have to, we can make it official that the two candidates running for mayor would be excluded from the pool. Is second. So there's a motion before us relative to the candidates not being eligible to be the acting mayor. Is there any discussion on that? Wow, this is the quietest I have ever seen this group of people. I must say. <laughs> I'm going to put this in a diary somewhere. Um, so, Councillor Lisi, you're on mute. Uh, thank you. I just wonder, um, and I'm just wondering out loud here, because it seems that the pool of candidates that were from a professional like management um, role to take on the, the the role of mayor like a like a, somebody who would be qualified as a city manager to step in because we are i mean to councillor mcgee's point we need somebody with a particular skill set who could fill in on a full-time basis and um you're bringing up the, the notion that there may be um, multiple conflicts and you know, it, it i think it's worth at least thinking for a moment whether or not we want to um hire somebody that has like city manager experience. Oh boy. So um, I guess I would like to speak to that. Part of the urgency that we're having and part of the problem as I understood um, our pre council president to explain was the fact that we have such a short window of time and if we're gonna go through a vetting process and a screening process, et cetera, et cetera, I mean, I, I think we need to look at the pool of people who serve now and know the city, especially we're going into budget time in a minute. So I think personally, we're gonna to have to keep it within the house of the city council. Um, but I'm not sure if we wanna restrict it or not, but um, I'll, we, the motion, I guess, is seconded for discussion. So if anybody wishes to comment further, um, that takes our pool to nine. If I'm counting right. So I'm open to any other comments or discussion. I'm sorry, I missed, I, I had to use, you know what, but I oh. missed your discussion. So what, what are you down to nine on? So, uh, Councillor Murphy, there has been a motion made and seconded that current candidates for mayor that sit on the city council would not be eligible to be voted as acting mayor. 
So that motion is before us. And in this committee, of course, two is a majority, <laughs> FYI. <laughs> Not that you didn't know that. Um, and so that's what we're talking about, whether okay. that's a good idea, a bad idea, um, et cetera. But just, but just to fill Councilor Murphy in on the, the other point that was raised there was we're starting to narrow the pool significantly. And so I, I raised the question as to whether um, we should be seeking somebody that has professional like city manager experience to fill in the role because there's just fewer and fewer candidates to draw from and it is a demanding position. It, de it deserves a, de a level of uh, expertise um, and we're, we're sort of very limited on the candidates that we would be able to draw from internally. Um, so Councilor Murphy, to that point, that is why you heard the number nine. Okay. So there would be nine remaining on the council and I wouldn't presume that there's no one willing to serve. And so um, I think if there's nobody else who wishes to be heard on- Madam Chair, motion, one more time, please. Councilor Greeny. We've just had a mayor who resigned, who walked into the mayor's office with zero experience and did the job. There are sitting members of the city council that can do the job. Believe me, there are. I have confidence in most of the people that would be in the pool. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilor Greeny. I concur. Councilor McGivern. I, I, I concur too, and I, and I just think for two reasons. But one most important is tomorrow night's vote's important, but tomorrow night we have to get this language to the state so that the legislature and the governor agrees will hopefully agree with us and until they until they sign it until they adopt it themselves we're still in that same position where march 26 is coming quick so i think you know to take it out of the per, out of the arena of an elected official may raise some eyebrows down in boston i think we have to keep it with elected officials i agree Okay, so on the motion before us that the two candidates would be excluded from consideration as the acting mayor, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. So two to one, that amendment to the resolution passes. And so is there any other um matter before us on the four agenda items that anybody would like to speak to councillor sullivan so I, I like the way this is proceeding but i just would like to raise one question for whoever wants to answer it what if another city council member now becomes appointed to the, as the acting mayor and then after that decides to run, having used that now as their platform. Well, wouldn't that be interesting? <laughs> I, just, I just wanted to, you know, make sure we dot the I's and cross the T's here, you know? So are you he must have watched Alfred Hitchcock as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, it, it was more like the outer limits, but that's all right. Well, um, it's within the realm of the committee um, as um, Councillor McGee had publicly stated at the time when he thought he'd have more time or whatever um, affected the change in his thinking um, that he would not um, seek to be elected mayor. Um, that was a voluntary disclosure on his part. So. I mean, you could leave it voluntary. I guess you could stipulate it, but on the other hand, I don't know how reasonable that is either. I mean, people have the right to do or not do. We've made this decision based on what we know, but I'm open to whatever the committee wants to do. I don't have a strong personal feeling in that regard one way or the other. But if anybody on the committee wishes to speak, to it, I mean, I don't know how deep into the weeds we have to get, but. <laughs> Actually, Madam Chair, I'd like to move the question and let's let's just do what we've done, okay? 
Okay. So as it stands right now, we're making it an appointment of the council that it won't include the two declared candidates and that the person who is elected in November will be seated as soon as the election is certified, finalized, uh, sworn in, and will um, begin the duties as mayor almost immediately, being the practical effect of it. Um, Attorney Barnes, do I have that down correctly at this point? Yes, so I added um, a sentence at the end of the first paragraph says no member of the city council running for mayor in the regularly scheduled municipal election shall be an eligible appointee of the city council for acting mayor. Okay. Does everybody that is present on the city council at this zoom meeting feel comfortable that they understand the language or do you want to see it on a screen share. Um, Councillor Sullivan. You're muted. Yeah, sorry, I just forgot to take my hand out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Councillor Tallman. Yes, uh, could could Crystal read that once more time about the uh, the member that she just would read? You, uh, yeah. Would you like it screen shared too so you can yeah. see it? Yeah, yeah, that'd be important to see that, yeah. Okay. Um, Attorney Barnes, if you could screen share that and just read it for people who might be having a hard time seeing it. Sure. Thank you. So it's um, this last sentence here. So it says no member of the city council running for mayor in the regularly scheduled municipal election shall be an eligible appointee of the city council for acting mayor. Okay. Okay. Okay, so Attorney Barnes, do you have any concerns with any of this language that's before us? Should the City Council adopt it and send it to the state? Do you think we're clean and clear to accomplish our goal? So I, I, I think it's up to the state and what they're going to do. They're also going to propose changes. Um, I think the sentence that was just added might be a point of contention. Um, I think it, it was brought up already that, you know, what if somebody decides to run afterwards? And um, I don't know if it's, I mean, it's up to the vote of the body. So if they don't want to appoint somebody that's already running, then I think that would be extinguished all on its own. Okay. Um, that's my only sentence that I'm thinking is going to be an issue. There's, I can't think of it off the top of my head, but there are rules about interfering with people's ability to run for office and I don't know if that's going to be thought of that way. Okay well all right well that's a fair point um, so I guess we would have to be prepared to meet um, in a special session or something if there is some feedback that would require immediate answer from the council right? Correct. Well, and I we're putting the cart before the horse because this council hasn't even reviewed this and acted on it. Although I think we have a majority with us tonight. I still think we should be prepared for that extra um, night. So I don't know if that's something to schedule in okay. an instance that um, we just want it there. And if we don't use it, great. But mm -hmm. I envision there to be edits to come back from the state. Um, they've done it on some of our other things as well, so. Okay, well, uh, thank you for that advice so we can be proactive. Okay, um, Councilor Tallman. Yes, uh, uh, to Crystal through the chair. Cr Crystal, on this uh, event, I mean, getting this through, I think the important thing is to get this to the state um, in a timely manner. Um, hopefully, we can send it out tomorrow after we discuss uh, the, the finality of it. Um, but what if something happens, we don't get it back from the state in time, they make some edits, and March 26 comes along, and the council president can't serve, who actually would be serving as the acting mayor for the time, for the short period of time that we would get the, the direction of, directive from the state? We actually don't have that laid out in our charter, which is sort of an unfortunate situation. Um, I don't know the answer to that question. I haven't had a chance to discuss with the elections division what that looks like. I don't see any um, order of succession listed in MGL either. So it's, we're sort of silent all 
throughout how that would look. If I may, if it's a short period of time, Councilor Tom, and I, I don't foresee the the issues that I've been working on, but if the longer period of time, that's where it raised uh, the concern that I brought up tonight. Right. So the hope is to get it done by the 26th, but if not, I I don't see an issue just for a short period of time. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, Councilor Bartley. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, I, I was wondering if, if you wanted to, if the committee wanted to consider putting a language relative to uh, uh, making an affirmative statement, to, something to affect if a, uh, uh, if a you, you had a negative on there, right? That the uh, person can't run for mayor, but maybe you could have an affirmative on there that the person could run for another municipal office. So I, I don't know if the com committee wants to consider that. I'm just putting it out for a suggestion. Uh, the, the second statement is did because I had to walk away for a, a personal matter. Did 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 we did we discuss, uh, Madam Chair, the matter of uh, 46, 4359A, uh, the, the state law? I, I just want to I just want to make sure that that hasn't been forgotten. And, and then and then third of all, I, I, I guess I, I guess I've got to get a clear legal. Uh, discussion because our charter says what it says, right? Uh, our charter says that the uh, city council president shall assume the role. So, so I, I guess I need to get a uh, just a clear understanding. Maybe this is already discussed while I was away, and I apologize for for that, Madam Chair. If that was if that's the case, and I'll just watch the tape and just tell me that was tell me that's the case. But uh, if if the if we had a clear discussion <clears throat> about what our, our charter says. Uh, relative to the uh, the council president. Now, I mean, here we have a situation where, where, and, and Todd, I'm not speaking as if you're not here. I just want to use just generic terms, okay? So uh, here we have a, a situation where we have a council president, and and the council president says, um, I I don't I don't want to do that. And this is America. You can do what you want. In my my opinion. So the do we have to have the Council President resign. I don't think I don't know if we discuss that. Do we have to have the Council President resign? Then the City Council appoint a new Council President who would then serve as acting mayor. Now I don't know if that was discussed tonight I, either, but uh, I, I would want to have that. I would want to have that laid out before us so we can understand. So the so the three just to summarize, uh, uh, Madam Chair, I, I, I like this committee to consider possibly an affirmative statement that that. Um, somebody from this body, uh, should they assume the acting? So you see, you have the negative in there. So somebody it, could- it, it, Councilor Bartley, if I may. Yeah, that, sorry. That did not get amended. There was no motion made to exclude the acting mayor from running for mayor. Just to clarify. Well, okay, okay. So I, 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 saw, I saw that language in there. So that, that, that didn't pass. Okay, so, but, but maybe, Maybe it'll come on. We're just a recommend. You're, we're just a recommending body and committee. So maybe that'll come up tomorrow. I, I don't. I'm just throwing it out there for a suggestion. Really, I. Right, right. So the so to clarify the language that is in there yeah. at the moment is that the two declared candidates for mayor can't be appointed as acting mayor. That language is in the amendment. Yeah, I, I copy, and so okay. and so. What what? But what's not in there? And I, I I'm sorry if I'm, I just got too many things going on at the same time. I apologize for that. So, uh, there 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 was a rec well, there was a recommendation that the person who serves as acting mayor shall not be a candidate for uh, the November election. I, I thought it, I, it I, discussion. It did. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. I mean, I I. I I for one would agree with that, but that's that's me. Uh, but if if we're not gonna if if that language comes up again, then uh, per, perhaps we could consider an affirmative statement as I suggested. Okay, blah blah. I just said it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then the second one is I, I don't know if we had a clear discussion about uh, that state law that I just the section fifty nine whatever it is. Um, and 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 that's that that's a general law that that talks about uh, succession. And and I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know if that law, if that law is uh, supersedes the city charter, and so I'm wondering. I mean, so I I think that that discussion needs to take place um, at some point, uh, or otherwise we're going to hear from the uh, 
House and Senate counsel uh, on it. So we, we should at least have some understanding or some legal opinion on it for sure. And, and then the, um, uh, whatever the hell I said for a third, I just, I'm, <laughs> my train of thought, but I, I had, I had, I had, I actually had a good third, third suggestion. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm sorry about that. The third suggestion, uh, Madam Chair, and I'm sorry for not monopolizing. I apologize. Um, uh, the, the third suggestion, just in summary, was a discussion of, because we have a charter and the charter says what it says, you know, about the council president stepping up. Well, in this case, the council president declined. So we should maybe get a legal opinion on whether the council president, if, the, if he's gonna decline, and if that's our only path, then the council president should maybe, you know, maybe has to resign and then we have to appoint a new council president. So those are my three points, just for consideration. I thank you. Thank you, Councilor Bartley. So under suspension of rules, um, Attorney Barnes, can you um, review for us that state law? I believe I had looked it up and it calls for the city council to appoint the acting mayor, if I remember what I read correctly. Can you? Sure. So, master, yep, Mass General Laws uh, Chapter 43, Section 59A falls under Plan B forms of government, which we are not. We would actually okay. fall under Mass General Laws Chapter 43, Section 26, the vacancies in office of mayor or city council, acting mayor. Okay. And does that say anything that contradicts what we've done so far tonight? It doesn't, it has the president of city council shall succeed to set office for unexpired term. And that's if um, the vacancy occurs in the last six months of the term. Mm -hmm. But it has been relayed to me that our charter is what is going to dictate our procedure here. Okay. So my question relative to our charter is, we're outside of the six month window. So what effect does that have? So that's where our special election would come into play, which is why we're trying to petition the state to allow us to do a separate procedure, which Correct. is why- I, I understand that part, but the let me clarify. I'm talking about it from the perspective of the question raised about the role of the president. Correct, so in the instance of a vacancy, the president would have to assume the duties. So uh, otherwise, we don't have a, a list of succession after that. If it doesn't say if the president should choose exactly. not to assume the duties, then so and so would take over. There's no, you know, vice president. Exactly. And and I understand that and I get that, but there was then another question raised about the role requiring the action. And so from my perspective, because we are not within the charter we have the ability to do something different from what the charter requires, but it would seem that we would wanna be keeping true to the charter as much as we can. So that brings me to the question of, which I would ask in another different way than Councilor Bartley did, but asking the same question, would that mean that whoever is appointed as the acting mayor would then in effect become the president of the city council because the roles go together. I think that, that needs to be laid out in your petition to the state. So whatever we're petitioning for the state for needs to be explicit. We're already outside of our charter requirement of holding a special election. Right. So whatever we're asking them to do needs to lay out whatever it is you're asking them to do. I don't want to start creating assumptions because now you're saying, you know, now the acting mayor would become city council president. That's not it at all. Um, you don't want to go in reverse just because it, it sort of might make sense. Um, we need to ask the state for exactly what we want. We're already outside of our charter. Let's ask them for those specific edits. Okay. Madam okay. Chair. Councilor Murphy Please. and then Councilor Greeny. Yeah, I, I, uh, you know, I, I think what we're asking for would resolve a lot of these. If the state legislature agrees to this petition, we pretty much take care of everything. I think Councilor McGee gets to stay council president. 
uh, because we've asked for permission for a different process to have an <laughs> acting mayor. Uh, if they don't go along with it, uh, and obviously Councilman McGee said he could st stay in for a while. Uh, if they don't go along with it, then we may in fact have to do something. But I, I, I think, and I, based on, again, the Boston election, and I think it was Lawrence, I can't believe that our, our Senator and our state rep can't make sure that we get this uh, adopted and passed through so that we can move on and, and, and go from there. Okay, is there, a, thank you, Councilor Murphy. You're welcome. Um, Councilor Graney. Yeah, just uh, just to re reiterate what uh, Council Murphy just said, I agree with that. We're just asking the state for a waiver, and the waiver is the language that we put in it to just allow us to appoint, you know, an acting mayor. Now they could agree with it, they could change the language, they could do, but let's just put it in paper, let's send it to them, see what they say, and then we can act on it. Okay, thank you. Okay, so at this point. Um, oh, Councilor Tallman. Yeah, thank you, uh, Chairman Vapen. Um, my other concern is, as Crystal stated earlier, about the uh, the two candidates running for mayor, that maybe we should strike that and that, you know, when we get this back, that, uh, you know, the council is going to appoint a council member. And we all know that, um, I mean, I guess we have a right to vote for anyone, but that those two will be excluded from um, getting a vote. Um, that's just my thought, because she said that could be difficult uh, with the state with that with that phrase in there so i i mean just a thought if if i'll make, uh, I'll make a motion to remove that that section because of what legal advised i'll second it any further discussion not seeing any all in favor of the motion to remove the language that says a candidate for mayor may not be considered in the acting mayor position for the council appointment. All in favor? Aye. 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 All, I think we have a three yes vote. So now we have a resolution that says the city council will appoint an acting mayor. This person who is appointed as the acting mayor will remain a city councilor. And that upon election in November, the person to be elected mayor will be seated and sworn in as soon as practical following certification of the vote. Are we all on the same page, Attorney Barnes? Yes, and I have comments in my draft in case you decide to put things back in so that I don't lose the language. <laughs> well, I predict, although we have a quorum here for the city council, that we will probably have this discussion perhaps tomorrow. Is everybody all set with this language at this time? Um, this is a recommending body. We are recommending a draft to the full council for tomorrow night, which I feel will probably be debated again. Not seeing any, um, I would entertain a motion to recommend adoption of the resolution as amended tonight to be put Don't in move. the form and but forwarded to the council. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Not hearing any opposed, the vote is 3-0. It will go to council in draft form tomorrow. Thank you all. So now I would like to entertain a motion to take up items 5A, 5B, and number 10 under suspension rules, please. Second. Motion to take up 5A, 5B, and number 10. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So item 5A is a petition calling for the resignation of Mayor Alex Morris, as well as calling on the city council to pass a resolution calling for the resignation of Mayor Alex Morris. Item 5B. Is a letter dated 1117 from our city solicitor, Crystal Barnes, 
regarding the procedure and requirements of a citizen's petition, which affords them a general meeting. Item 10 is a communication from UMass Amherst of 2221 by the group Saul, Wing Arnstein and Lehrer, the final investigative report on the Alex Morse matter. So before us, we have the petition. And I just also want to note, because we have not officially accepted it into the public record, but it is a matter of public knowledge that our mayor has resigned effective March 26th. Um, it will be officially received into the record tomorrow night at city council. Um, so my question, Jeffrey, if you could check, is there anybody who is here from the public on this matter tonight? There are members of the public here, but nobody has, nobody has stated they're here for this matter. Okay. So I'm going to ask anybody from the public who's in attendance, if you are here for the matter of the petition for a general meeting by the public that you make yourselves known so that you can speak. Um, while we're waiting to see if there is anybody here for that purpose, um, I wanna put into the public record that I made an attempt to schedule this meeting for last Thursday. I was unable to confirm my attendance before the date got taken. So the individual who through our process of holding the general meeting had agreed to be the facilitator, um, had surgery in between Thursday and today and is unable to attend tonight. And so in the interest of that process and the agreement that we had relative to it, um, while I know that we have the investigative report in our record and I know that our mayor is moving on to a different position. Um, and we know that UMass Amherst will not be having him back as a professor in their institution following the investigation. What I would like to do is entertain a motion to table this to April 12th at 6.30 so that the facilitator will have an opportunity to participate as had been previously set up. Motion the table till April 12th. Okay, okay. Um, the motion is to table this general meeting of the public to April 12th at 6.30 p.m. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. I'll accept a motion to take up item six. Motion to take up six. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item six filed by Councilor Sullivan ordered that the DPW commissioners and sewer commissioners meet with the council to discuss merger of and or elimination of the sewer commission and the sewer deficit. Um, Councilor Sullivan, would you like to update us as to the current events relative to this order? Yep. Uh, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. So um, I've had an opportunity now. The re first of all, the reason I filed this order is because we actually uh, have three um, three commissions. Um, all, currently, all three are composed of the same three members. Also. Um, and um, we, we have the uh, sewer commission, the stormwater separation commission, and the, the uh, DPW commissioners. Um, right now, uh, well, when, originally when I filed this order and uh, st still to this day, it, it would do us well to streamline the whole procedure and, and improve efficiency just in the way we do things to have it all come under the DPW. Um, and, and eliminate the sewer commission and the um, stormwater separation commission and just have it be handled by the by the DPW commission. Um, the uh, uh, I've spoken with the 
uh, chairman, uh, who happens to be the chairman of all three commissions, he is in complete agreement with this. I've also um, spoken with the uh, uh, superintendent of the DPW. Uh, he, he agrees also that um, th this would, uh, that it's all, all of the functions on the committee are related and intertwined together already. So um, uh, we, we've got three good people on there. Um, they're doing a great job. Um, it eliminates the potential for conflict in the future also. Uh, if you think about this, what could happen is you could, the, the possibilities there right now as things are structured to come up with nine different people doing the same, doing the same intertwined jobs as different commissions. So it will also eliminate the, the possibility of future, future problems. Um, the, uh, the other, the last piece of wording on it uh, we had here and, and the uh, sewer deficit, which has been addressed in previous orders and we now have in place uh, a shutoff, um, although it's been suspended during COVID here, but that was working very well in addressing the situation. So what myself, what I'd like to see is uh, us come with whatever is necessary, be it charter change or whatever to um, combine these three all just into the DPW commission. Um, and thank I you. I believe Mike McManus is listening if, if we do need to talk to him. Okay, I do see uh, Mike McManus on the call. Um, I was wondering if under suspension of rules, um, Attorney Barnes, would we need to take some certain specific procedural steps to make this possible if the boards and the superintendent see it as a good change? Is Attorney Barnes with us still? She's still on screen. She might have stepped away. She's muted. Okay. Um, so Jeffrey, if you do notice that she comes back, um, I would just be interested in understanding if there are some other procedural steps that we have to take to properly amend things to accomplish the merger of the boards. I'm here. Sorry, I was... Oh, no problem. <laughs> I seem to be talking about things that are pertinent to people exactly when they have to depart for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so if you could just re, uh, let me know what the, refresh okay. my, thank you. <laughs> okay, so the gist of the question is that the DPW boards that are separate now see no purpose that continues to exist to remain separated and wish to be merged into one DPW board. So the question is, are there other procedural steps that we need to go through in a particular way to accomplish that change um, rather than simply adopting the order as filed? So I would need to look, I know we did some initial research on this before uh, some other series of events started to happen and our attention got taken away. So I mm -hmm. do have quite a bit of research done from I think over Christmas time, um, where we were looking to see into the individual boards um, if they have any of their own requirements as to dissolving or creating, um, because those will need to be followed, but I don't have the answer for you right now. So that's something that I'll have to come back to you with. Okay, so would it be fair to say, um, Councillor Sullivan, that we would table this for legal advice as to next steps being that all of the boards are in have a consensus that the consolidation is desirable yes no problem at all it's it's been out there for three years now so i i have no problem waiting another couple of weeks yeah. okay um i'm interested to know i will recognize Councilor tallman but i'm interested to know if the committee would like to suspend our rules so that superintendent Mc mike mcmanus could speak yep Suspend the rules to allow Mike to speak or ask questions and answer questions. I, I'll, I'll second it. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Uh, but I just want to let Councillor Tommen speak and then I'll go to you, Mike. Okay. 
All set? Councilor Tom, and you have the floor. Okay, okay. thank you, Sharon. I, I agree with uh, Michael. I, uh, I think this is something that's been going on for a number of years. It just makes uh, logical sense to have these, uh, these commissioners, uh, you know, they're all the same person to be put on the same on one uh, one board and I talked to uh, the superintendent of the DPW today about this issue and uh, it does make perfect sense it makes it a little bit easier than having these same three people and having potentially having to have nine different people on three different boards so um, I, I agree with Councilor Sullivan I think this is a great idea thank you thank you um, Mr. McManus you have the floor thank you I uh, so the uh, the sewer commissioner generally falls under the Board of Public Works in the city ordinances. Uh, but there's, I, I couldn't find a, a definitive location in the ordinances where it names a sewer commission. Instead it says the Board of Public Works shall be responsible for laying a sewer uh, lines, grades, and, and so on. But it doesn't name them as a, a sewer commission. Okay. The, the stormwater authority does have its own place in the ordinances uh, and administration is uh, generally defined in section 3878 and, and I don't see any there's not a lot of cross reference between the Board of Public Works and the stormwater authority okay um, but as uh, Councillor Sullivan said it, it is three individuals that occupy uh, the positions in these three boards. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, there is a lot of um, overlay between stormwater authority and engineering and other DPW functions as, and the same with the sewer commission and other DPW and engineering functions mm -hmm. that DPW performs. So it makes sense to consolidate everything into one single board. Okay, thank you. So as a practical matter, is what is happening, one board is opening the meeting, having the meeting, adjourning, immediately opening the next meeting on the same night? Is that kind of how it's all happening? Yeah, we, we generally open up the, all three meetings at the same time. Oh, okay. We have an agenda for all three boards. The minutes are consolidated for all three boards. Sometimes there will be uh, a stormwater permit where we need to meet for just that one particular issue. So then it's a meeting of the stormwater authority. Sometimes we have to hold a meeting for a personnel issue. And then it's just a meeting of the Board of Public Works. Uh, but okay. okay, so thank you very much for that. Um, I'm not seeing any other hands or people interested in speaking. If we're all set on it, then I'd entertain a motion to table for legal form to accomplish the consolidation of the boards. Motion to table, motion to table. Get legal. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so that passes three to zero and we will await legal form and I'm hoping maybe that could come up for the April 12th meeting. Does that sound reasonable, Attorney Barnes? Um, as you all know, we have two people in my office. So assuming that nothing crazy comes up, uh, it should be reasonable, but I have no way of knowing, so. Well, and if it isn't, we will understand, uh, but we'll just put it on the agenda as a placeholder. so. We won't get Certainly. to 2023 and then have to dig it out of the jacket, okay? <laughs> That's okay. I, I appreciate your email uh, follow-up with me, so feel free to do the same as that meeting gets closer. Okay. All right. Good enough. Um, I'll entertain a motion to take up item seven. Go to item seven. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, item seven is a letter from former city solicitor Paul Payer regarding a legal opinion on city council influence on the awarding of contracts. Um, I'd accept a motion to receive and keep on file. Motion is to receive and keep on file. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, 
I mean, and basically the gist of the letter was that we are not to take actions influencing the awarding of contracts because that is a mayoral function, just as a brief summary. Um, item, uh, can I have a motion go to take to a item eight? eight? Go to item eight. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item Aye. eight is a letter from Acting City Solicitor Crystal Barnes dated 10-620. Legal opinion on charter change procedures. Um, I'd entertain a motion to accept and keep on file for future reference. Motion to receive and keep on file. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, um, motion to take up item 9A and B together. Motion to spend the rules, take up 9A and B as a package. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So item 9A was filed by me and Council Bartley, ordered that a city council rule be added that city council committees assigned in the prior term remain in effect for re-elected councilors and the president elect assign until the president elect assigns new committees. Item 9B is a letter from acting city solicitor Crystal Barnes a dated 12 15 20 a legal opinion on subcommittee assignments um in brief summary when we discussed this in the past there were questions relative to if the committees would be able to function if council membership changed etc um the rule contemplates that certainly the president of the council will be elected as required and be in place however it also contemplates that there may be times and situations, particularly if there is a large turnover of a city council, that it may take a new president some time to sort out and be able to make the determination of what the makeup would be. And so in the interest of being able to continue, as we all know, we have a lot of things in jackets um, that go back and things that are tabled and having action so in the interest of being able to continue the work, um, certainly with the understanding that the president would be elected and understanding that in our rules, we have the ability to make committees whole under our current rules, if a member or a chair is missing from the committee. Um, that's the background and the basis for the request for the rule change. And I uh, will leave it to the committee or members of the council for any further comments they may like to add. Not seeing any, not hearing any. I'd entertain a motion to adopt the rule. Second. I'll make that motion to adopt the rule. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So we will recommend to the city council that this rule be adopted. And we've already addressed item 10. And so we are at the end of our agenda. I thank everybody for their attendance and debate um, and ask for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you everyone and good, good night. night.